Hi everyone, welcome back. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So let's continue with this video. So in this video we will discuss, as you can see on my screen, the Flutter versus Kotlin multi-platform. Which one should you learn? So if you are building mobile apps in 2025 or maybe in the coming year, 26, you have probably asked this question, should I go with the Flutter or Kotlin multi-platform? Most of the developers are going through this question. So one gives you beautiful UIs out of the box, while the other one gives you native power with shared logic. Okay, cool. So, but which one actually makes more sense to your next step? Okay. So we'll break it down or we will consider all the factors, performance, ecosystem, tooling, real world developer experience, all the things will be covered here. So let's start with this comparison. First of all, let me give you just a little bit of overview of the docs. So the docs are well organized for both uh, technologies, but for quarterly multi-platforms, it's just the beginning you can say. Uh, it's not that advanced as we have for the flutter but very soon it's going to become that much advanced as well okay so but still it has improved a lot in the last one or two years as i am doing the kotlin multi-platform since it's starting okay and before that i used flutter as well so can go through the docs the things which are mentioned there docs blogs there are showcases about the like which apps are using flutter which companies we can development things learn ai these integrations multi-platform for all the platform specific things then we have docs cookbooks tutorials you can go anywhere right so then similarly we can have with Corel multi-platform as well so this is their home page if you see this is about again the companies using Corel multi-platform some architectural diagrams then compose multi-platform then again companies using this then we have docs similar to that but docs are not that advanced as of now but they are improving day by day so they will be becoming very advanced very soon okay we can assume so let's go to the comparisons now so these are the comparison features we'll be comparing against core idea performance, UI development, ecosystem libraries, developer experience, real world use cases, learning curve and future, final verdict. Okay, so let's start with that. So core idea. So Flutter is created by Google. It uses Dart language, Comply, comp sorry, compiles UI plus logic together. Write once, run everywhere. You can write once source code and then run it on every platform. So one code base for everything, UI plus logic. So it's one code base. Okay. But now notice the differences. So this is backed by JetBrains. Also backed by Google now, you can say. Kotlin multi-platform is completely supported by Google now. It uses Kotlin, same as Android. Shares business logic. So it, the same code is written at one place in the Flutter, but Kotlin multi-platform provides a little bit flexibility. The UI choices. We can share just business logic or we can share UI as well. Or we can combine both of them. Sharing some UI plus sharing some business logic plus using some native UI, all those things are here. So it, you can say share what makes sense, stay native where it matters, right? It uses Dart language. So for Android devs, if you see Kotlin, they are already using, so it, Kotlin multi-platform becomes pretty easy to move on because they already use Kotlin, but they need to learn Dart is completely new language if, it, if they move to Flutter. Then we have performance. So Flutter uses Dart plus Kia rendering engine so ui drawn directly on the canvas bypassing native ui layers okay and i guess for ios it, it it moved on to the impeller as well so for shared ui compose multi-platform it uses compose multi-platform for sharing ui it also uses skia rendering that is the same thing so when you choose native uis performance equals fully native app that is the advantage uh, that is the advantage here if you see but here you can see it uses dart but native ui layers are skipped bypass using skia only but here here we have two options using skia as well by compose multi-platform but using native ui as well if you see that will become like fully native apps just business logic will be shared like jetpack compose for android swift ui for ios but just trying a business business logic in the kotlin it delivers consistent 60 to 120 fps performance these are just estimates across platform so for animation things it works pretty fine but now, uh, Kotlin multi-platforms, Compose multi-platform is also improving on these things. So startup time is usually fast. So app size can be slightly larger. 
but now things are improving on flutter side as well i will say and so here if you see in the course multi platform you get the best of both worlds native level performance or cross platform sorry cross platform consistency so if you see it uses skia for rendering bypassing the native no native ui but here it has both options so plus it has something extra than this right then next thing is ui development so ui built using widgets declarative like compose so that is the same thing single ui layer for both platforms and easy to make pixel perfect designs but can feel less native on ios sometimes but on but now it's improving i will say to be honest so and but kotlin multi platform you can say it provides flexibility so you can use compose multi platform to share ui or build fully native ui again that same thing that is the best feature i guess of the kotlin multi platform as compared to flutter it provides flexibility okay so this way it allows teams to choose between maximum code reuse or full native ui control depending on product needs even if they can share some parts of the ui and they can keep some part native and we then just share the business logic as well there are three to four ways to do these things so let's say for one screen they are keeping the native ui just sharing the business logic in the kmm side but for other screens they are using the native ui as well okay and but just sharing the logic there in the kmm so it provides more flexibility more control that is the so that is the main advantage i like about our multi platform and ecosystem and libraries so if you see as flutter is flutter is it has like since so many years flutter is there it's it's like established okay but kotlin multi platform is being established okay so that's why huge package ecosystem is there pub.dev you can find mostly for each thing like packages on the pub.dev mature plugins for firebase ai camera maps etc etc big community support and frequent updates from google as well but here again if you see its library ecosystem is also growing even all these kind of libraries are supporting it and also if you see we have some klibs as well which provides all the libraries for available for kotlin multi platform so then it has official support from jetbrain plus google for on drive studio integration google is completely supporting kotlin multi platform tooling catching up fast especially with camp 2.0 and compose multi platform yeah so since after kotlin 2.0 so tooling is also improving everything compose hot reload is also available there if you will observe okay, after the 2.0 okay other things are also improving so debugging support many other things are still improving and they will be keep improving i guess then the developer experience so compose again flutter has hot reload unified code base new language dart sometimes tricky native integrations yeah so for some complex uh, native functionalities like device specific for android or ios we don't find like libraries or maybe we need to some cust customize the things there then it becomes a little bit complex or difficult here in the flutter to write those libraries it uses like platform channels to communicate with that uh, native code but here kotlin multi platform it's native debugging in android studio and xcode yeah so for android and ios it provides native debugging we can completely do debug the app for android in android studio but for ios in the xcode as well but now uh, debugging support is uh coming uh, in android studio as well if you use the latest version so it's already there debugging the ios apps in android studio itself but if you want complete more control like xcode style then you can use xcode as well so again reuse kotlin skills existing again if you are an android developer you can reuse your kotlin skills because it's completely kotlin based again hot reload is also supported using compose multi platform initial setup can be slightly more involved yeah i will agree with that so a little bit uh, gradual setup and other things are there but they are there in the uh, flutter side as well if you see then we have real world use cases so which companies are using which technologies so used by flutter is used by alibaba ebay motors bmw reflectly and many others popular brands and best for startups mvps internal tools apps targeting multiple platforms quickly yeah that is the main point but kotlin multi platform it's used by netflix 
Philips, McDonald's, Forbes, and major Android teams, yeah, and many other more like big brands are involved there. It best for existing Android teams expanding to iOS, yeah, that is the very important like use case you can say. If you have just an existing native Android app and you want iOS side as well, then you can move the shared logic to the KMM and then create the UI in the iOS and use the business logic from the KMM. It's becoming very popular among Android developers who are expanding support to the iOS. So, and I have also heard about like some companies moved from Flutter to the Kotlin multi-platform as well. So maybe you can check out all the showcases on the Kotlin multi-platform docs. So then we have learning curve and future. So Flutter is easier to get started with, fast results, single code bases. So like if you want quick MVP product, then you can start with Flutter, no issue. But when you want scalable product, then it's better to go with the KMP. So KMP has a steeper step setup curve, but is a future proof choice. Yeah, as I said, future proof choice for Kotlin dev. Compose multi-platform gives developers the freedom to share UI when needed without losing native performance or flexibility. That is again the important thing. Then JetBrains plus Google collaborations ensures campus long term stability and ecosystem growth. Yeah, because Google is completely supporting this KMP move from the JetBrains. They have collab collaborations. So that's that that ensures like camp is here for staying long term. Yeah, it's stable, you can say. Its stability is long term. So again, this is the main advantage. The flexibility thing is like I like that flexibility thing. So flexibility, that thing is like the most important, like or you can say most advanced feature of this Kotlin multi-platform. The best one I would say that I like. So then we have real world use cases. So when to use which one? So choose Flutter if you want to build full apps fast and don't need complex platform native features. Again, I said, so for simple apps, it's like fine use Flutter. If you are new to both Flutter, Dart or Kotlin, then it applies then. And if you are okay learning Dart, yeah, as I said. So, and again, choose Kotlin multi-platform. If you are an Android dev who wants to go to multi-platform and you care about native look. So, because if you want native UI plus shared business logic, then also you can go to Kotlin multi-platform. If you are an Android dev, then also you can go to multi-platform. If you want a future ready stack with JetBrains for Google, again, it provides option to share backend side as well. So, yeah, that's why. Future ready stack with JetBrains for Google Sport. Choose Kotlin multi platform. You want more flexibility and long term scalability, then also go to Kotlin multi platform. So, personally, I would say Flutter is great to start, KMP is great to stay. That's my course. Flutter is great to start, KMP is great to stay. So, I hope you might have got the idea which one you should pick for your next app. And if yes, what's your pick? Drop it in the comments. And if you are choosing Kotlin multi platform, so I have courses on complete crash courses on YouTube for Kotlin, six hours crash course on Kotlin, and then I have one project based compose multi platform course as well. And then I have I have Kotlin multi platform things as well as a playlist. So you can check them out. Don't forget to check them out if you are like moving to the Kotlin multi platform or starting it. So that's all about this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. And if you have enjoyed it, please, please like, share, and comment on it. And don't forget to subscribe. I will see you in another video with another cool content. Till then, bye bye. Take care. Have a great time. Keep coding.